Hi, this is Ana Dominguez, your language coach, and today is St. Valentine's Day, so my intention is to read with you the first part of Cupid and CK. And remember, CK is the name of this character, this young lady, and is how we pronounce also, I think in Greek, uh, soul and also butterfly. That's why in this beautiful picture we have the butterfly that is, is there above their heads. And so we are going to read these first parts and in this uh, video, you will learn with me classical mythology and practice the language of telling stories in English. Yes, because you will see uh, in these three videos that um, I have in mind to, to make just three videos with this story. And you will review spelling of certain words, phonetics, expressions, formal style and grammar. Recommendation, take notes while you listen because I'll be reading, but at the same time I'll be commenting certain words, expressions, phonetics, and so on. So let's continue. Intentionally, I haven't used pictures to illustrate the story because I want you to use your own imagination to see the scenarios described, the characters described, the objects described. Yes? Once upon a time, a king and a queen had three fair daughters, of whom the two eldest came to wed princely suitors. So remember, fair, just, just to, to name a few things, fair in this case is um, related to certain race or with certain beauty, okay? So fair daughters, and then once upon a time, this is the typical expression that we use when we are telling stories. And then we, I keep reading, but remember that to wed is, is coming from wedding, okay? So the, the two eldest came to wed princely suitors, yes? Suitors, there is people that are suitable, you know, that suit them. So the correlation, correlated ones that match them, we could say. But the youngest, Sike, was so wondrously, wondrously, wondrously beautiful that no one durst woo her, yes? Who seemed worthy rather of adoration. Men gazed at her from afar as at a goddess, and the rumor went that this was no mortal maiden, but Aphrodite herself, revealed on earth to show her much less charms in flesh and blood. So they were comparing her with Aphrodite, and this is going to be a trouble um, for Sike. Words that you can practice with me wondrously, wondrously, although it's a O, that is expressed, okay, with with a, so it's an O, but you say wondrous, wondrously, and the O -u is like a schwa, so wondrously, beautiful, beautiful, yes, and then no one durst woo her, durst, vale? So when you say durst, remember, is to dare, is not, no, no one dare woo, there is satrevia, no, dare, durst is similar to dare, escrito dare. Yes, and vu is like saying vu, no, it's a, it's a um, onomatopoeic word that means to, um, to invite also vu, not, it's not only saying, um, no, actually vu is not saying vu um, with, the, with, the, with the words, I mean with the, with the sound, like vu, no, it's like more to seek the love Yes, with a view to marriage. So nobody, nobody dares to ask her to marry him. Yes, so no, that, no, nobody was looking her to, to ask her for marriage because it was so beautiful that everybody felt a little bit intimidated in front of her. Um, so also vu can also mean to invite, yes? Uh, it's an interesting word. Okay, so we keep going and uh, um, we say in the second part, they say, so eager was 
all the world to behold this prodigy that far and wide the altars of the true goddess stood cold and silent, her chief shrines at, and this is a very interesting word, that obviously is a word that um, uh, needs, is, is said needs, so it's e and then the swa, oh, the u is a swa, so it's a, a sound, sound, needs, paphos, and sit, this one is so difficult, so I'm just gonna make it more um, city, Cithera, 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 vale? Cithera, Cithera. So there is a schwa at the end. Um, these are names from Athens, okay? Uh, so remember to practice them if you want. I keep going. Shrines, her chief shrines. You could also say in in this context, um, chief is the principal. So shrines for this moment, in this moment, it might mean a place or object preserved because of its history or associations. You know. So her chief shrines also almost, it could also be the the church, the altars, the saint places right of these places that we have already mentioned uh, Nidus, Paphos and Cythera deserted by the crowds flocking to strew flowers under the feet of Sique and remember by the crowds la multitud, flocking to strew flowers you know and um, that were moving to to strew Flowers, para poner flores debajo, no? Under the feet of CK. The yellow Aphrodite, seeing herself neglected for such a rival, rival is rival, called on her son, repito esto, called on her son to avenge her with his mischievous arrows. Mischievous is also a very interesting word, um, adjective, mischievous como travieso, ¿vale? Y en este caso, arrows sería, pues, los arcos, ¿no? Y en este caso, bueno, arcos es bow y arrows son las flexas. Mischievous arrows. Aphrodite's words in, the, in direct, direct speech. Esto es un direct speech, speech, every time that you see quotations. So, inflame her heart with love, but with the hottest love for the meanest wretch alive, so that together they may come to poverty and sorrow. So Aphrodite wanted that Sique fell in love to this meanest, es como el más horrible, ¿no? Meanest, the meanest wretch alive, sí, lo más horrendo ¿no? que se pueda encontrar. And um, she wants her to, to fall in love um, with this creature very unfortunate and unhappy, meanest wretch alive, right? So that together they may come to poverty and sorrow. So Aphrodite was very jealous and she wanted this future for CK. But let's see what happened. Remember, Aphrodite is a goddess, CK is a human uh, girl. Ever, ever too ready to play his cruel tricks, cruel tricks, Young Cupid promised to do his mother's biding and flew off to work harm for CK. So you can see how it works, this story uh, and this language of the story. And flew off to work harm for CK. You say it's a not very literary way of saying that, that he went to do this, this work, this job, this. Um, this command um, from his mother to cause pain in CK. But at the first sight of her beauty, he was so amazed that he dropped on his foot the shaft he had made ready for her. Yes, and remember shaft in this context that we know he was, um, 
um, you know, using some treatments in the in the in the arrows, yeah. Um, so obviously, this will this will mm, affect and harm not only the the body but as well the spirit. So they say that they even put in the shaft in this kind of almost a bit punta de flecha. It was also included some kind of poison, you know, for the soul as well. Remember that they first, when you prink your finger with this kind of arrows and shaft, you, you feel suddenly different and you start, you know, loving someone at the first sight, the first person that you see. Very similar, this is a story to, to, to the, the theater play that you have seen with me together in, in the Shakespeare theater play called the, the Midsummer Night, right? Um, so remember, the shaft he had made ready for her and so became wounded, 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 sorry, this is a very difficult word for me sometimes. Um, so I'm going to repeat that word. Wounded, wounded, ¿vale? Como una ola larga, wounded. By the enchant enchantment, 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 you understand the enchantment because it's very similar to the uh, Spanish one and Latin word ones, enchantment, encantamiento, ¿vale? So, enchantment, enchantment, so remember, no, it's not E, it's E, enchantment of his own weapon, himself unseen, que no, que no, que no se ve, he loved, this mortal as hotly, tan fuerte, ¿no? Tan apasionadamente hotly viene de hot, pero con, con ardor, ¿no? As hotly as he thought to make her love some unworthy man. So we continue reading the next part of the story that say, Meanwhile, it grieved Sique's parents that so many came to wonder at, at but none to wed their youngest daughter. The anxious father sought an oracle of Apollo. So remember now Apollo, the, this god um, of the reason, the order, the logical mind, says uh, that had an, an, an oracle and that shared the temple with Dionysus. Um, this, the same Apollo had an oracle and the father went to see what, what the oracle was saying, so to know how she should find a husband. And the answer filled him with dread. Dread is como terror, ¿no? Con angustia, miedo, terror. Dread, viene de dreadful. Something this dreadful is horrible, ¿sí? Con horror, podemos decir. On the top of a high rocky mountain, he was told, very interesting, he was told, you know, this is a very interesting way to say, um, se le dijo, no, se fue dicho, he was told, passive voice, he must leave his daughter alone in bridal array, in bridal array, and bridal array is, you know, with all the garments, with everything prepared as if it were going to happen, her wedding, yes, so the bridal array is when you get dressed and perfumed and everything is organized very well because you're you are going to marry to get married there should she caras como esto no there should she be wood vuelvo a aparecer la palabra wood que se in this case is some so there should she there should she be wooed by one of whom matrimonio by one of whom the very gods stood in fear she whom men likened to Aphrodite was worthy of no common mate so she whom men likened 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 a ver, like 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 not, is it? O sea, gust, que le está, que le gust, así que gustaba, ¿no? Que, que es que era gustada por los hombres, que es, fijaros cómo es el lenguaje más poético y más formal, 
que nos vamos por terrenos que, que, bueno, que son difíciles de pronunciar, por lo menos para mí, lichen, pero claro, like, lichen y luego añadimos el LD, por lo tanto, no se pronuncia la E, pero sí la D. Lichen, lichen, ¿vale? Acaba en D y no se pronuncia la E. Lichen to Aphrodite was worthy of no common mate. Hard was it to part with their daughter Das. Fijaros. Hard was it to part with their daughter Das. Duro fue el partir con su, con su hija de esta manera. Das es como de esta manera, ¿no? But her parents does not disobey the oracle. Y otra vez, does como there, ¿os acordáis? Pero sus padres, does no se atrevieron a desobedecer, desobedecer el, or, el oráculo. El oracle, el oracle, no, el oracle. And says, at nightfall, they led her up the mountain with a wedding train that seemed rather a funeral, but, vamos a repetir esto, at nightfall, they led her up the mountain with a wedding train, and the wedding train is the people that are accompany her, you know, to the wedding place. That seemed rather a funeral, you know, because they are going to leave her very on the top of a mountain waiting for some creature that we don't know who is going to appear. So, for the light of the torches burned dim, the light of the torches burned dim, very beautiful way to describe these torches, las antorchas, no, quemándose y con una luz dim, no, como candileja, no, así em, en bajito, dim. Suave. Uh, and the songs of the bridesmaids, bridesmaids, the girls that are company and are friends of the bride, turned to dirges, turned to dirges. So the songs of the bridesmaids turned to dirges because this sound and the appearance was more like a funeral than a wedding. So dirges are these, these cries out loud that Uh, people made, especially in in these uh, cultures, um, in, in that are um, showing the pain of someone dead, no? someone that is being buried or someone that has passed away. So the dirges are these kind of expressions of usually women that are crying out loud for this loss. We could say. And poor Psyche was fain to dry her tears with her bridal veil. Was fain to, es como, fue destinada, ¿no? Was fain to dry, secar her tears, sus, sus lágrimas, with her bridal veil, con, con el, el velo de, de matrimonio, ¿no? Bridal, de la, del, del traje de novia, vamos a decir. But having resigned herself, to this strange fate, as the will of the gods, she strove to comfort her weeping friends. I repeat, but having resigned herself to this strange fate, as the will of the gods, she strove to comfort her weeping friends. And so she also was able to um, comfort the weeping friends that were around her, Yes, and so she was kind of, um, um, we could say, she, de she did her effort, strive, strove, stroven, is um, uh, striven, sorry, striven. Um, it's also an expression of saying that she made her effort to comfort her weeping friends. Weeping, planideras, vale? Weeping friends, or lloran, que lloran. Weeping. The top of the mountain reached, they quenched the torches, and with tearful farewells left the maiden alone at bed at night, as it burned here to her tongue. So remember, this is also, the language is difficult, you know, it's not, it's not something that when you read it aloud, uh, for non-native speakers is difficult, and I guess that for native speakers is also difficult sometimes. So no worries if you don't get 
perfect these um, these phonetics and these words because it requires a time. I have read this many times and I, I am still having troubles with some of these words. This is so normal. So the top of the mountain reached, they quenched, no, they placed the torches someplace, they, qu they quenched the torches and with tearful farewells left. So tearful, so farewell is gone. Bueno, ya hasta aquí, no? Hasta aquí hemos llegado. Left the maiden, la que se va a casar, no? Alone, at the dead at night, as it burned here to her tomb. Y acuérdalos, born, fuera como si hubiera sido, si hubiera nacido para acabar de esta manera, ¿no? Acordaros este, um, also, bueno, in this case, in this case as well, um, as it burned here, um, burned in this case also, um, supports, no, as it support here to her tongue and um, to produce natural growth to hold up under be capable of to it born here to her tongue dead of night as it born mm, it, i mean born bear is so, tolerar or soportar and the the participle is it's also born in written in this way so but in this case, I guess it's also coming from nacida, vale? Yo creo que it, it is more this burn as if she was born, you see, um, born, you know, here to her tongue, as if it were born here to her tongue. I think it's, it's in this way. We can also comment and have a conversation about this later in the class next day. I keep reading. And when all were gone, cuando todos se fueron, when all were gone, Sique stood shuddering in the chill darkness. Sique stood shuddering, temblando, temblorosa, temblando, in the chill darkness. Sí, chill con frío, que hace frío. Esta oscuridad fría. Full of fear. But soon came a gentle zephyr. And zephyr is this, in, in, in mythology, is, is, the, is the wind, is one of the winds that softly, softly wrapped her about and carried her away to lay her on a bed of scented flowers. Then it says, daylight awoke her to look around in wonder, close at hand, she saw a grove of tall trees through which flowed a crystal stream and on its banks stood a house so noble that it appeared the home of a god. The roof of costly woods was burned up by golden and ivory pillars. The floor was paved with colored marbles and the walls glowed with pictures inlaid in gems and precious metals. I'm not going to, to enter in detail here because I want to go a little bit faster now, but remember, try to imagine this place. If you understand the substantives that I have already um, read here, if you don't understand them, also you can also check the in, in word reference, the meaning because I don't want to comment in every line, but it's not difficult, it's just a matter of paying attention, you see, and understand that maybe you can't understand the whole text. But if you are having already the image, the image of her being lifted in the air by Zephyr, and she has been brought to a, a house, a place like a palace, right? Um, you will understand these better. When Sique ventured to enter, she found vast inner halls more and more splendid. The farther she stole on tiptoe. You see, tiptoe is andar de puntillas, huh? 
filled with treasures from every part of the earth and everywhere lit by a gleam of gold shining like the sun. And what seemed most marvelous, all these riches were unguarded. Very interesting word, unguarded. Que no había guardia, que las guardias, que lo guardase, ¿no? Were unguarded. Every door stood open and no living form came to view as she passed from chamber to chamber, lost in astonishment at the wealth of their unknown Lord. I keep reading, okay? If you have any question, just ask me, yes? If not, look for the meaning in word reference, but I think it's, it's not as difficult this part as may, maybe other parts, you see? Then, CK words in direct speech says, who can it be that owns so many rich and beautiful things? She cried out at length, and soft voices answered in her ear, though as yet she saw no human form. The servant's words in direct speech, no? they say to her, all are thine, and thine is a an old version, and an old version in of English of of you. So, or yours in this case. All are yours. It's the same as saying all are thine. It's the same. All are yours, CK. All are thine, CK. And we are the servants. The is your servants. But it's an ancient form of English. Um, from the 16th century and all of this. Appointed to wait on thee, appointed to wait on thee, for, on you again. So this is ancient way. That's why the, if you pray in English, you will find this much easier because these forms appear very easily in, in, the, in the praise. Command us thou wilt, as it shall be done. So command us, Though wills is command, ordenanos as a nosotros as command as though wills a tu voluntad. Though is, is a tu voluntad, wills voluntad, vale? Tu voluntad. And it shall be done. Is that right? So when she was tired of wandering through the palace, wandering is moviéndose, no? De un lado por otro, wander. What, no, de, no de preguntarse, sino de moverse de un lado para otro, as she was tired of wandering through the palace and feasting. Bueno, viene de, de, llenar, no, de llenarse de festín. Entonces, fijaros, feasting um, is, is, is written like that, but when you pronounce, you have to pronounce feasting. Okay, so feasting her eyes on its beauty. CK took courage to try what such invisible attendants could do for her. Having refreshed herself by bathing in a bath of silver, she took her place at a golden table. Fijaros. Having refreshed, esto es interesante que lo recordéis, ¿no? Habiendo se refrescado ella misma, ¿no? En un, to, tomándose un baño en, en una bañera, de plateada o de plata, she took her place at a golden table. Tomó asiento en una mesa de oro that was at once spread, que fue de una, spread, llenada, o, sí, como sí, llena, with the finest fare. Y fare, in this case, is food. ¿Vale? I know you haven't seen probably this before, but this is the word fare that means food. Then, as she ate and drank, soft music arose and a choir of sweet voices filled the room where she sat alone. Fijaros, la palabra coro, that it's, it's also something that choir, choir, choir. So it's, I know it's choir, it's these kind of words that we need to pronounce one and again because it, it makes us um, doubt. So we keep going. 
with the next part, shall we? So the day passed by as in a dream, and when night fell, she would have lain down on a soft couch. Y aquí aprovecho para deciros que fijaros, couch es como, en ese, en ese caso es un sillón, couch, y que yo soy coach. ¿Cómo se escribe coach? Coach, ¿verdad? C-O-A-C-H, pero couch de sillón se escribe con O-U-C-H, ¿vale? So, a soft couch is spread for her by those unseen hands. No, es como un little fairies, you know, they, are, they don't say fairies, but these are kind of fairies. That's why I think that probably this was um, in, an inspiration for Shakespeare to, to, write, um, to write his theater play. Um, because they, they don't talk about fairies, these little creatures that, they, that are unseen and that they do things, well, I think these are these um, these texts that I have placed here is not mine, obviously. Um, I found it in a in a book of mythology, um, and I think this is a version that probably Shakespeare himself probably had read before. Um, there are fountains, obviously, of of these uh, literary uh, stories that were written before Shakespeare. I keep reading. Now, was she aware of a shadow by her side and had almost cried out for terror, but her fears were kissed away as she found herself warmly embraced in the darkness and heard a voice murmuring, again, murmuring, escrito con U, pero si A, murmuring to her in the kindest tone, kindest tone. If we keep going, Cupid's words, so Cupid's words in direct speech. Cupid's words in direct speech. Dear Sike, I am the husband chosen for the destiny. Para tu destino. Acordados, the es esta fórmula antigua del inglés y significa tu destino. Ask not my name, seek not to see my face, only believe in my love and all will be well with us. Vale? So this is a command that Cupid is saying to CK, don't look at me. Don't try to, 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 to ask for my name. No, don't, so don't ask my name. Don't see my face. Just trust me, believe in my love, and everything will be fine with us. Everything will be well with us. Uh, so I just want you to remember this way. No? Ask not my name. Seek not to see my face, only believe in my love, and all will be well with us. The very sound of his voice and the very touch of his hand won Sike's heart to this unseen bridegroom. Bridegroom, el novio, ¿vale? Bridegroom. All night he told her of his love. Y digo he porque es que sepáis que es escupido, ¿no? All night he told her of his love. And before daylight dawned, he was gone, since so it must be, promising with a kiss to return as soon as darkness fell. Fijaros, no? He was gone as soon, dice, all night he told her of his love. And before daylight dawned, no, dawned, la, la mañana, eh, before daylight dawned, antes de, de que es, de que amaneciese, ¿no? He was gone. Se había ido. Sin so it must be. Sin antes, ¿no? Que fuese el, una promesa. Promising with a kiss to return as soon as darkness fell. Thus it was. Esto era así, ¿no? Thus it was. Night after night. That is it's another uh, very literary expression. That's así era, ¿no? Eso era así. Thus it was night after night that went by in tender speeches and in, in endearments. Endearments, yet never could she see her lover's face. ¿Veis? No podía ver su cara. Y hasta aquí. Well done. Remember, this is just the first part. 
Now read it on your own and send me your audio by email to analanguagecoach at gmail.com. This is for you that you are my coachee um, and you are going to receive this video in an email with the PDF and all you need to do is to take notes while you listen to this video, re review certain words, expressions. Why? Because this is going to help you to get better at using formal style, okay? I'll see you next time. Have a fantastic St. Valentine's night. Bye.